G'day, and welcome back to Down the Shed with Byron. Today, I'm having a crack at fitting the Black Hawk low clearance front radius arms. Now, these are designed to bring your front axle forward roughly 15 mil, that helps with larger tires. Also corrects your caster when you do a lift kit. They do advise um, from three inch lifts up. I've only got a two inch lift in this um, old girl with a couple of spacers. I've also put those, I think they're 16 mil spacers in the radius arms as well. And I've also got fitted the offset caster bushes in there. I got a wheel alignment done not long ago where we found the left hand side still needed another degree of caster to bring it within spec. So I thought, why not have a crack at fitting these arms? So let's see how we go. Straight out of the box, you've got your new arm, you've got a bag of bolts, washers, and some spring washers. Um, you've got a little retaining plate. That's like a little cover, which I'll show you after. And you've got like the drop box section where the rear eyelet bolts into. The bolts, so these will be for if you've got ABS lines. So I'll just put them in those bolt holes in the arm. These are for your sway bar link if you're running them. Um, that's for the rear eyelet uh, bush. And these are for your mountings to secure that box into the chassis. Here's a little overview of this one of the standard arms. Now I think it's out of my mate's GU, which is similar. And the new arm. I'll sit it on top and I'll just show you a difference again. With those bolt holes lined up, you can definitely see the difference and how they're a, um, a low clearance arm. Cool. All right, let's get into it. One of the first jobs I'm gonna do is just loop everything up with some WD-40. So the front radius arm bolts on both sides. The rear radius arm nut, which holds the uh, mushroom bushes into the chassis. From there, over to the transmission cross member bolts. So these will be pretty rusty if you haven't taken them out for a while. So these inside bolts here, which go into the chassis rail. Yep, I'm just gonna send the little nozzle through here and hopefully flood it and get some penetration onto it. The first job I'm gonna start by doing is removing the sway bar link completely. So I'm just gonna take that out of the picture so it's not in the way. Then I think one of the most important jobs to start off with is making sure we can undo all these transmission cross-member uh, bolts. Now I'll move on to the um, steering drag link and crack that off and we'll Get that out of the way. Now I've moved on to the front radius arm bolts. So we'll try and undo them. These will be tight, or should be. If you've got a 24 or 15 16 ratchet spanner, this is the go. Now sometimes these bolts can be headaches. So you'll get the nut off, but what will happen is the bolt will seize on the inside of this bush. And it turns the job from being in an awesome afternoon with your mate doing it to a pain in the butt. What you wanna do is get a small cutting disc and cut through the bush 
and the bolt if you can on each side. I'll show you later. Um, and have to order some more bolts. But yeah, just something to be mindful of. This can wreck your day. Moving on to that rear nut that holds the mushroom bushes in place. I've cracked them from underneath. And again, this ratchet spanner, handy as. Now you just got the tedious progress of uh, undoing it. On some vehicles, you can get a socket in there with an extension and out the back here, you'll be able to put a wobble drive and a ratchet at the back. Uh, I can't really do that at the moment. We go. All right. As you've seen, I've just done one side at a time. Um, and I'm doing it on the floor to share with you guys that you can do it in the driveway. Bloody glad I pulled them out. Just have another look. Uh, this front one here, it's got, you can see the rubber's broken away from the metal section. The mushroom bush, it's not, it's not bad, but I've, it's not good either. So um, these are those spaces I was talking about. If I can get it off and they bring your front radius arm forward. These ones should be 16 mil. But yeah, I'll show you the difference with the arms now. So basically, your first one is your standard sort of radius arm, normal setup. Then the one I just took out of my car with the spacer and the offset bushes. Now the upgrade. Yeah. With that balancing just on top of what I had, the bolt holes lined up. It's pretty much lined up, I reckon. So yeah, we'll see how we go when we put them in. So moving on to the next part, where we've got to pull everything out of the box and work out where it all goes. Um, there's no instructions, but I found them online. So if you look up the Black Hawk um, control arms, they have instruction um, manual there. Hopefully, the video I've made, <laughs> you don't need that. There's obviously our adapter that goes back into where the mushroom bush goes. Um, and it also has the part number and what side it's for. So this is the right hand side. Now our first step is to assemble this first. That's a little retaining plate that'll lock onto the back. I'll, um, I'll take photos and put it up as we're talking. This here will just be a little bash guard. That's what I've worked out. Then all the nuts and bolts. Just empty those out. Now with everything laid out, it makes it pretty self-explanatory. It's just a bit of a Meccano kit. Now this will slide back into where that mushroom bush went, where the transmission uh, cross member is. That'll slide under between it. So now it does say to uh, fit the arm to the box and fit is one unit. I just went and trialed that into place, and yeah, you can't get to that bolt once it's in, in the chassis rail. So to me, you wanna be doing that up when it's on the ground and the vehicle's at its ride height that it's suited, but you can't get to it. So I looked at the illustration that they've got, and we'll just put it together quickly. I've also put uh, a bit of Loctite on the thread, a bit of Never Seize on the actual shaft of the bolt, for the just in case down the track. Then just do this up loosely, tighten it up later. The hydraulic jack just underneath the transmission um, cross member. We'll just remove this bolt. I'll just lower it down now and um, 
just be cautious and remember the back of the engine or whatever you've got at the front of the engine doesn't hit. But we'll get it down enough. Oh yeah, she's not going any further there. And what we'll do now is we'll just give that surface area between the um, chassis and the cross member a clean. So that way there's no dirt or anything in the way to uh, interfere with that. Sliding the arm back under without scratching it. <laughs> and um, I'll see if I can guide it into place. Now with a little bit of a wriggle at the end, I did put a bit of lube on the end of that um, box <laughs> and uh, so I could get it in. And so far, everything's looking pretty much lined up. So there we go, it's pretty flush there. And when I push that um, arm up, those bolt holes pretty much line up. Now we've just got this little gusset bracket that sits on top. The threads are facing down. So that'll be pulling the um, box up into the chassis rail, and then we'll put the bolt in through the other way as well. So what I've done, I've just put the bolts in place with a touch of Loctite on them. Uh, I haven't done them up yet, because what I want to do is I'll get the transmission uh, cross member bolts in place, and then we'll go from there, tighten it all up once it's in situ. Now what I've done, I've just jacked up the transmission cross member again and loosely fitted these bolts in place. And a good tool for this is a podgy bar or a um, Phillips head screwdriver. So you can lever this around into the right position. So now they're all loosely in place. There's also, like once we tighten it all up, we'll pull these two front bolts back out so we can fit this little plate over that nut and that'll cover it over like that. And I have a feeling we'll have to pull these washers out, but I'll check that once we've got it in place. So here comes the tricky part, trying to get this arm back into place on your own. So now I've got it, I just rolled the wheel forward a bit. I can get the arm into place. I think we're gonna be easier. If I can get a podgy bar in this front bolt hole. Bear with me. So all I've done is I just pushed the wheel forward, <laughs> chocked it with my hammer, which gave me enough um, room to be able to get a podgy bar in there and lever it and get the bolt started. Now it's just a matter of just wriggling it and holding your tongue right, getting those bolts in. Now with that front bolt in place, I'm not gonna worry about the one at the rear yet because we'll just be fighting ourselves against this radius arm. So we'll strip that one out and swap it over later. Move on to, I've tightened up these bolts here. So now they're, they're tight. We'll leave that loose just for the present moment until we've got the other side sorted. I'll smash that other side out and I'll come back to you shortly. Now with that left hand side all done, I um, got the front bolt back into place on that control arm. Then what I've done is I've got the jack underneath the pinion with a block of wood and just jacked it up slowly until the second bolt lined up and then pushed them both in each side. Once that was all in place, pulled the jack back out. I went back across the transmission slash that box, tightened up all those bolts um, and then put the guard back on and I'll show you that on this side here. So this was what I was on about, the radius arm rear mounting box. 
I just went through, I've tightened up the bolt up there, tightened up the lower bolt. Um, then I went across all the transmission cross member bolts and I tightened them all up. Then I removed the two front ones because this is where I'll put that guard on now. So to put this little guard over, just line it up. There's a couple of bolts at the front here that um, screw in, some six mil bolts. If I can get them in. Then the transmission mount bolt holes. That's pretty much it. There's two, two bolts at the front, two for the rear. Just a little cover, I presume, just to ensure that bolt doesn't come out. Little guard in place, I reckon it tidies it right up. Now I just gotta move on to tightening up that bolt just in there. While I was here, I just put the steering arm back in place, tighten that up. And before we tighten up those bolts for the radius arm, um, we want to make sure the patrol or your, your vehicle in general is in a neutral position. So it's how it should be sitting on the road. Otherwise, if you tighten it up while it's in the air, that bush will be all bound up. Then you rotate that arm, that's going to be under tension the whole time and possibly fail earlier than what it should be. So yep, we're going to jump back under now, tighten up all three of those bolts, six of those bolts, and uh, we should be good to go. So the rear bolt, you can actually get a um, 24 mil spanner into there and then just keep tightening it up until it's um, tight. The same with all the rest, tighten up as tight as possible, slash ah, the spec and you should be good to go. So I think that kit was pretty good. Um, the one thing they could have maybe thrown in there um, just for precaution to help anyone out, especially if you're doing it on a Sunday Arvo, <laughs> uh, is to give you some new radius arm bolts. There's only four. Um, they could have thrown in a few new ones of those and even the transmission cross member bolts, maybe thrown in a set of those. But otherwise, the kit is pretty good. Um, you may have noticed I haven't put the sway bar link on yet, and that's due to I need different size um, sway bar link like D clamps and D bushes. So I'll sort that out later, I'll put up another video. Tools for the job, well, a basic socket set. Most handiest part of what I had was um, a 24 mil ratchet spanner. So that was handy. Otherwise, hydraulic jack, uh, maybe a 27 mil socket, and the rest of it's pretty much, you, in, should be in your basic tool kit. Um, but that was it, a podgy bar, and cut the pry bars, which help. But as you can see, you can basically do it on the floor, um, in the driveway, out in the dirt. <laughs> so I'm hoping this video helps you out. Um, if there's any other tips we can give others, because this is the first time I've fitted them, um, please put it in the comment to help others out. Otherwise, that's about it. Take it easy, and I'll see you when I'm looking at you.